Bravo, runway. Okay. 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 When flying in icing conditions, the wings, the empennage, the engines, and many systems of an airplane may suffer from a deterioration in performance. The aerodynamics is affected by a reduction of the lift coefficient of the stall angle of attack, by a possible decrease of the horizontal stabilizer efficiency and an increase in drag. Flying in icing conditions may have adverse consequences on engine behavior. On a jet engine, there may be ice accretion and shedding on the fan blades and on the spinner, icing of sensors affecting the regulation, etc. These consequences are usually a function of the thrust level. Many aircraft sensors, such as pitot, angle of attack and side slip vanes, etc., are anti-iced. For the icing tests, a specific instrumentation is installed on the airplane. The liquid water content and the size of the droplets are measured with appropriate tools. Cameras are installed at various places. A small rod, visible from the captain's seat, allows the captain to monitor the ice accumulation in real time. Until recently, two types of icing conditions were considered for certification. They are described in Appendix C of the Certification Regulations CS25. Continuous maximum icing corresponds to a long flight in a stratiform cloud. Intermittent maximum is associated with very fast icing in a cumulonimbus. The regulatory cloud length for continuous maximum icing is 17.4 nautical miles. However, all clouds have varying size of droplets, liquid water content and temperature. Therefore, the regulations allow the tests to be performed with different values of these parameters according to a correction table. As an order of magnitude, the ice accretion for continuous maximum icing is around 25 millimeters in 15 to 25 minutes. Similarly, the regulatory cloud length for intermittent maximum icing is 2.6 nautical miles. Corrections are also possible when parameters differ from the standard conditions. This type of icing corresponds to an accretion of around 6 to 10 millimeters in 50 to 80 seconds. The main challenge for natural icing tests is to find the proper flying area. If it is relatively easy for slow transport aircraft, it is much more difficult for large transport jets. Weather forecasts do not give sufficiently accurate liquid water content values and droplet sizes to choose suitable test areas. In Europe, Airbus performs most of the tests in small cumulonimbus that are developing. Sometimes, tests are also performed in stratiform clouds in North America, the Great Lakes, or Alaska. Ice accretion is only possible if the leading edges are at a negative temperature, as otherwise, the supercooled water droplets of the cloud would not be transformed into ice when impacting. The temperature at the impact point is called total temperature, and it is higher than the temperature of the airflow. The difference increases with the speed of the plane. Due to their higher operational speed, large transport aircraft need to fly faster for the tests in conditions where the static temperature is lower. The consequence is that there are fewer supercooled droplets and less accretion. To maximize the accretion, the total temperature must be as high as possible, but never above zero. Therefore, the target for the crew is to keep flying at an altitude where the total temperature is around minus 2 degrees Celsius. This may lead to an abrupt flying technique 
with altitude changes in order to maintain these conditions. When flying in a large cumulus or a small cumulonimbus, the crew try to stay in the yellow zone of the weather radar display. This may also involve rather aggressive maneuvers with steep turns. The speed must be sufficient to perform these maneuvers, taking into account the turbulence. Tests are carried out with different slats and flaps deflections, and with various thrust levels, at least on the engine under test. At the end of each test, the airplane is accelerated at high speed, possibly in descent, to increase the total temperature in order to de-ice it completely. On large airplanes, possible handling issues in icing conditions at low speed are checked with ice shapes on the leading edges. It is important to be able to fly the engines in real icing conditions, as in the past, the test results were sometimes slightly different from those obtained on the ground test bench. It is quite frequent to be struck by lightning. Most of the time, there is no significant damage. There are only very small impacts on some rivets. The repairs are made at the end of the test campaign. Until recently, in the regulations, the size of the droplets was limited to 50 microns. New amendments consider the icing risks with supercooled large drops, up to one millimeter, which corresponds to freezing rain. The adverse effects of large droplets is much more significant on smaller, slower speed airplanes, particularly those with manual flying controls. As it is extremely difficult to find such flying conditions, Various means such as analysis, simulated icing tests, computed ice shapes, etc. may be used to demonstrate compliance. The new regulations require icing of the sensors by ice crystals at high altitude to be considered. However, for a long time now, due to the specifications of the sensors, the associated validation tests have already been performed by the manufacturers. As the conditions are very difficult to find in flight, the validation is performed on test benches. Natural icing tests are challenging. They are highly dependent on weather conditions and therefore they may significantly impact the test planning. Test results could have consequences in many domains. Aerodynamics, engines, systems and sensors. This is why these tests are so important. <laughs>